Hey guys, so if you're seeing this face, it must mean that it's time for another Divi tutorial. And today we're going to be sharing an awesome tip on how you can include different pieces of code in Divi modules by escaping the custom code area in the advanced tab of your Divi modules. Guys, we're also going to be showing you how you can utilize the new Bing chat GPT integration with the new Microsoft Edge browser to generate some code for you. So. Why don't we stop wasting time and get right to it? Oh, and by the way, don't forget to like and subscribe to not miss out on future on future tutorials by the Divi Engine team. Also, don't forget to comment on these videos because that's what keeps us going. So now officially, let's go get to it. So here we are on the page that we built in that chat GPT tutorial that we did a while ago. And if you haven't watched that yet, I did this already, go watch it. It's amazing. Now we've already got two buttons here on the page. I've got my click me here that has no animation right now. And then I've got the one that I had done previously in that other tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and edit the page now. Okay. And here we are. Now here I've already named the secondary button wiggle button. And I can go in and I can go in here and edit stuff. And I'm going to be interested in this advanced tab. Now, the key to this is, is that you can make these modules stand by themselves. You don't have to add code to your theme options. You don't need to add a code module or anything like that. This is what makes this so cool. And it makes things more portable. If you need to send a client a new module for something, or, you know, could just be, you know, internally as you guys share assets among a team. So you're in the custom CSS. I want you guys to think about something here. And this is why this works so well and how I figured it out. When you click on the question mark here, you can see that this CSS will target this ETPB button one um, class. Now, what you need to envision here is that there's a curly brace at the beginning here and a curly brace on the other side. And then all this goes in between those two curly braces. And that, of course, would indicate the start and the end of the code that gets added there. Now, here's the magic. You can go ahead and put a closing curly brace to start with. And what that does, it escapes this ETPB button class. Now, you've got free reign of writing any CSS you want. You can go in here and now you can say dot, I don't know, other button or whatever you want to. You open the curly brace and then you type color red or whatever you want to. I'm going to give you a real world example right now. But here's the caveat. Because there is a closing invisible curly brace at the bottom here, you have to delete out your last curly brace. So boom, I'm gonna close that out and you'll see no more errors in this kind of console set up for the CSS. So I'm going to teach you another tool um, or one that I use sometimes for generating code. And it's going to be Bing, the new Edge uh, browser with the Bing chat GPT integration. And that's this right here. It's really awesome. And it sometimes gives you a little bit more contemporary information depending on what you're looking for. As you know, chat GPT only goes up until 2021. So I'm going to ask it for some code. So we're going to say, write me some CSS that will generate a button that, and remember I called it a wiggle button. So we're going to say that wiggles every two seconds, for example, um, to draw attention to itself. Now I want to go further define this. Now I could have gone further and set this prompt up by saying, Hey, you are a front end engineer that specializes in writing CSS to the chat bot and ask it if it understands, but I'm going to keep it to this. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on chat. Uh, well, something like chat GPT prompt engineering in the future. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like. Okay. So what else do we want to tell it? Well, maybe we want to tell it, we wanted to specify this a class here. So. This should use okay, the class dot de wiggle me 
and that class name could of course be whatever you want it to be to assign um which button should wiggle so that class is going to be used to identify which button we want to wiggle when this code executes okay now sometimes what these uh iterative chatbots do and maybe we'll just hit enter and see what it does they tend to go ahead and create code that draws the button on the screen but of course since we're using divi we don't need that right so again if you don't know um, or haven't seen a chat gpt article or tutorial on utilizing these ai bots um, for generating code with divi check it out um, okay so it's already starting to spit out some information here and now comes the code and here you can see the first thing it's doing is spitting out the actual um, styling of the button, but now it's also putting in there the duration stuff. Of course, these elements can be in one line, and then it kind of builds the animation. Of course, we want it to be a little bit different. We can ask it to iterate. We can say, do not define the button, only the animation. And let's see what it does. And I misspelled the, well, if you've watched my videos for a while, you know this is not a new thing. This is not a design class. This is a functionality class. So let's see what it does. Okay, now it's iterating the code a little bit and it's actually just spitting out the keyframes. That's not what we wanted either. So let's start over. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy what I just used. I'll paste that in there. And then in the initial prompt, I'll just tell it, you do not need to define or style the button, just the animation. Let's see what it does. And I kind of like this uh, Bing version of ChatGPT or the integration because they use the same uh, model. They just expand it with relevant information. Um, okay, so here it goes. So first, defines the animation, that's wonderful. And then it adds the keyframes for us. And there we go, all done. So all I need to do now is I go copy all of this code and I go back to my page here. I'm gonna delete this out, but I'm gonna keep that escaping curly brace that I've got right here. And I'm just going to paste the code in here. And then of course, I mentioned to you, delete the last curly brace. If you don't do that, it's going to break. All right. So let's go ahead and save that. And we'll pop on the front end and see what happens. And it does nothing. Now, why do you think it does nothing? Remember, I gave it that class, DE Wiggle Me. And I specified that. So we do need to assign that to the button. So let's edit the page again. And now we'll come down here to the Wiggle Me button. And then we just here on the advanced tab on a CSS ID and classes, we just go put in de dash wiggle dash me. That's it without the period, of course, because it already assumes that as that is the class box. Let's update that one more time. And let's go take a look. Look at it. It is moving kind of a seesaw motion. Now, of course, sometimes you need to go and refine these animations a little bit, but you kind of get the gist here of what and how easy it is to include code with this module. Now, if I wanted to go and let's say edit this, and let me go here and what I'm gonna do is add a new page and a new tab. Now, there's no other code aside from what's in that module, I can go copy this module, I can come over here, I can just say test page, and I'm going to enable the Divi Builder, of course. We'll build from scratch, we'll put a single column row, and then I won't put anything on there, but what I will do is right click, and let's paste that module in there. Let's publish this, and let's see if it copied that code over and simplified our lives a lot. We'll go to view page, and there she is. You've got the little wiggle button right there. So guys, this is kind of a really quick tip, not a quick tip like the other ones we do, but one that you should be utilizing in any Divi build that you do when you need to share some of those assets. 
it's a time saver, and it makes everything just a bit more portable. Now, just also as a side note, this does not work for JavaScript. You cannot go start putting a bunch of JS in there. It is only for CSS. Now, guys, and that was it. We did something very awesome that's going to really increase the efficiency and the portability of the builds that you do by building out different layouts and modules that are portable with the code embedded right in it without any need to utilize that Divi theme options or custom CSS code into those Divi code modules. So guys, again, if you haven't liked to subscribe the video yet, what are you waiting for? If you don't subscribe, you won't know all the great content that we're dropping. So with that, guys, it's been a trip. It's really been good having you here. I'm going to catch you in the next video. So I'll see you real soon. Bye for now.